If you're new to cybersecurity or hacking, you've probably heard people talk about Kali Linux a ton. The problem is that it's one of those things that people just kind of already expect you to know about. So nobody really explains what it is or how to install it. So my goal today is to fill you in on what it is, why people use it, and how to install it on a virtual machine inside your own computer. So this guide specifically is for installing Kali Linux on VirtualBox inside your machine. What that means is we're making a virtual version of a computer inside your own computer that's running Kali Linux as its own operating system. One of the coolest things about doing this is you can play around as much as you want and not have to worry about breaking anything on your actual computer. Say for instance, you delete some really important system files and now Kali's not working at all. Well, no worries. Just delete that VirtualBox and make a new one and you're good as new. And there are ways to install Kali directly on your hard drive as the main operating system, or even dual boot it alongside another operating system, but that's for a whole other video. So let's get right into it. I want to quickly explain what Kali is and why people use it. So what we're looking at right now is Kali installed on a virtual machine on my computer. And all Kali is is a distribution of Linux that people put together that already has a bunch of hacking and cybersecurity tools already pre-packaged in. Instead of just using Windows or Mac OS and then downloading every separate tool that you need, people just kind of took all those tools, put them together in this one simple package that already comes pre-installed. If we click this icon here in the top left and look, all of these are pre-installed tools for hacking and cybersecurity. Basically, it just makes the whole thing a lot easier. You don't have to go looking around for anything because it's all right here. And that, in a nutshell, is why people use Kali. So before we install anything, we need to make sure that your computer supports virtualization. It's a pretty common thing, but not every computer supports it. There are a few ways to check, so we'll run through a couple right now. For this part, I went ahead and turned my camera off just so you guys can see the screen nice and clearly. So the first way we're gonna check is through the task manager. You can either do this by hitting Control, Delete, or if you're on Windows 10, come down to the bottom bar right click and click on task manager. Now, once you're in the task manager, come up to these top tabs and click on performance. So mine is already highlighted, but you wanna click on the CPU tab over here on the left. Then once we're in here, we can look down and right there it says virtualization. And as you see on mine, it says enabled. If yours says disabled, you can look up the manufacturer of your CPU and see if they support virtualization and what steps you need to take to turn that on. And the second way to check to see if you have virtualization is exit out of this, then come down to your search bar in the bottom left and type in CMD and press enter and that brings up your command prompt. So we come up to the command prompt and we type in system info, S-Y-S-T-E-M-I-N-F-O and press enter. Now it's gonna take a second to load, but we'll get the information we need. Okay, so once that loads everything up, come down here and look for where it says Hyper-V Requirements. Then next to Hyper-V Requirements, you can see Virtualization Enabled in Firmware. Mine says yes, so mine is turned on. If yours says no here and in the Task Manager, it's possible that your computer does not support virtualization, but I suggest you look and see if the manufacturers of your CPU say if it does or does not support it. And if it does, follow their steps to turn it on for yourself. So now that we know that our machine supports virtualization, the next step is to actually download the virtualization software. Now the one I personally use and I'm gonna show in this guide is VirtualBox. So what you wanna do is come to virtualbox.org. Then over here on the left, go to downloads. Then you're gonna come over here to where it says platform packages, and you're gonna pick which one matches up with your computer's operating system. So I run Windows, so I'm gonna click on Windows Host, and that's gonna give me a download up here. So once that's done downloading, we're just gonna go ahead and run that file. It's an EXE, so we'll hit run, yes. So here's the install wizard, and we're just gonna run through this real quick. So next, I'm going to leave all these defaults. So next, leave all these defaults. Next, warning network interfaces, proceed with installation. Yes. And then install. And this could take a few minutes. So I'm just going to jump ahead to once it's already installed. 
Okay, now that that's done, we'll have this clicked so it'll start the virtual box so we can just take a quick look. So press finish, and there we go. This is our virtual box. Mine still has my Kali already installed, but yours will be blank. And really right now we can't really do much with this. So we'll move on to actually getting the Kali image. So the image is a file that basically has a copy of the operating system on it. The virtual box that we just downloaded basically acts as the virtual computer and the image is what actually holds the operating system. So we'll need to load the image file into the virtual box to get everything running. Now there are two ways to install Kali on the virtual box and we're going to run through both of them. The first thing we need to do for both is come to Kali.org. So once you're here at Kali.org, you will come here to downloads and it'll give you all these options. For the first option, what we'll need to do is click where it says virtual machines. You can see it's right here with this green looking box in the middle of it. So just go ahead and click right there. Now that brought us down to another choice. So right here, you can see it says VMware and VirtualBox. And like I said, in this guide, we're gonna be using VirtualBox. So make sure this thing here is set to 64 bit. And then you wanna click this little down arrow, which is the download symbol under VirtualBox 64. So I'm gonna just go ahead and skip ahead to once that's already downloaded. So we got our file downloaded and you might notice this is a .ova file. A lot of times images are .iso files, but this one's a little different. They have this set up to basically install itself on VirtualBox. That's why it was very important you make sure you download the VirtualBox version. So we'll go ahead and get that file started and it's gonna open up VirtualBox on its own. So we're just gonna click on it and let it get started. As you can see, it opened up VirtualBox on its own. So I'm gonna leave everything as is and just click import. Then we're gonna click agree. And there you go, it's importing it onto your machine. And once again, I'm just gonna skip ahead to when this process is done. Now that the file is done installing itself, you'll see your new VirtualBox here on the left. Before we get it started though, we need to change one setting. Make sure you have your new VirtualBox highlighted here on the left then come up here to settings, which is the yellow cog wheel and give it a click. Now, once we're in here, come down to system and you'll see here, it says base memory. The base memory is essentially your virtual RAM. The virtual machine does access your computer's physical RAM, but this bar right here allocates how much it can use. So one thing I like to do is just go ahead and move it all the way up to the top of the green. That way it's using more RAM, but not a dangerous amount. This will help your virtual machine do things a little bit faster and just run a little bit smoother. So once we do that, we move it up to the top of the green, go ahead and click OK, and we're ready to launch our virtual box. So make sure the right box is highlighted over here on the left and come up here to the green arrow and click Start. So now we're at the login screen, and you might notice that it's in windowed mode, and if you want to change that, just hold right control and press F, and that'll bring you to full screen. If you use left control, it won't work. It has to be the right. That's just a setting of VirtualBox itself. We didn't set a password, but luckily this download comes with a default username and password. And all it is is Kali, K-A-L-I, Kali, K-A-L-I, username Kali, password Kali. Then go ahead and click log in and you're in. There you go. You now have Kali installed on a VirtualBox on your PC. In case this is your first Linux machine, I just wanna show you how to update things real quick. I usually do this every time I log on just to make sure everything's up to date. So you come up here to the top left and click your terminal. So once you're in your terminal, you wanna do a sudo apt update and a sudo apt upgrade. So that's sudo S-U-D-O space apt A-P-T space update U-P-D-A-T-E and then press enter. And now the first time you do this, you'll get this message. But the reason we're being asked for a password is because when you type in sudo before a command, it's basically making you root temporarily. The root's like the administrator on Linux. So we can just use the password we already had, which is Kali, K-A-L-I, enter, and it'll go ahead and do all the updating for you. So once it finishes all those downloads, it has all the updates ready to go. So we need to do one more command. And that's sudo, S-U-D-O, space, apt, A-P-T, space, upgrade, U-P-G-R-A-D-E. And it shouldn't ask us for the password again since we just did sudo for the previous command. So then press enter. And that upgrades everything. 
So we'll go ahead and type clear. And then once you're done and you're ready to log off your virtual machine, you'll type shut down. That shut down one word, S-H-U-T-D-O-W-N space now and press enter and it'll shut down for you. And then you're good. So now we'll go over the other way to install Kali on your virtual machine. So once again, we come here to Kali.org, then go to downloads. And this time we're gonna click on the bare metal version instead of the virtual machines. So click bare metal, then scroll down a bit, make sure this bar right here is set to 64 bit. And then up here, we're gonna get this top one that says installer on it. So once again, click this download arrow and go ahead and let it download. Now that it's finished downloading, you might have noticed this is an ISO file rather than an OVA file. This means that we actually have to install it ourselves and it's not going to install on its own. So to install the ISO file, come to VirtualBox, then come up here and click New, and then you're going to name it. I like to just name it whatever it is, so I'm going to call it Kali. And then here it says which folder it's going to be in. And then down here in Type, the automatic is Microsoft Windows, we don't want that. So we're gonna come down here and click Linux. And then under version, it's Debian, D-E-B-I-A-N, 64 bit. So make sure it's set to that. Linux and then Debian 64 bit. Then click next. And just like we did after the fact with the other installation, we're gonna allocate how much virtual RAM our machine's gonna get. So just in case you missed that part, the virtual machine actually has access to our physical RAM. And right here, this slider lets us allocate how much it's able to use. So what I like to do is just put it to the top of the green. That allows us to have more RAM in our virtual machine so processes happen faster, but it's not so much that it'll actually put our machine in danger. So once we do that and put it to the top of the green, click next then create a virtual hard disk now. Hard disk file type, VDI is fine, just click next. Storage on physical hard disk. We can just leave this as dynamically allocated. So go ahead and click next. File location and size. So this is basically asking, where do you want the virtual machine saved on your actual computer? And how big does it need to be? How much actual space does it need to take up? And as you can see here, the default is eight gigabits, but you wanna bump that up to at least 20 gigabits just to cover the size of Kali itself. Make the file path whatever you want it to be, wherever you want it saved, and make sure this is set to at least 20 gigabits. So then go ahead and click create. And there you go. As you see, our new virtual machine has been made right here. You may have noticed though that we have not used the ISO file yet. So the next thing we need to do is click start and then you'll come to this screen right here. Select startup disk. Now usually this is blank, but I guess for some reason it knew where my ISO file was. So for you, click this little folder right here next to where it'll say empty. And then up here, click add. And then all of my downloads from the internet default to my downloads folder. So I'll go to downloads and then you'll see the ISO file right here. Kali Linux 2022 installer AMD 64. So double click that and then make sure it's highlighted here. Click choose and then start. And here we go. Now remember this always starts in windowed mode, but if you want to make it full screen, hold down right control and press F for full screen. And if you hold left control, it won't work. That's just a setting for VirtualBox. So now you can use your arrow keys to go up and down and you wanna go ahead and go to graphical install and press enter. Okay, and here we go. Select a language. I'm going for English, select whichever language you like. Select your location. I'm in the United States, so I'm picking that. Pick wherever you're from. Configure the keyboard. So what language do you want your keyboard to be in? I want mine to be American English, so I'm gonna press enter. Okay, configure the network. I just like using the default names from the OVA file. So we're just gonna go Kali, continue. Domain name, you can just go ahead and leave blank and press continue. Full name for the new user. You don't really have to fill this out. So I just like to go ahead and press Kali just to put something in there, but you don't really have to put your name. And then press continue, continue again, and now set up passwords. So here you wanna make something you can remember I use the defaults a lot from the OVA version, so I'm just gonna do the same thing here and do Kali and Kali, continue. And then your time zone, I'm in Eastern, put it to wherever you're at. Okay, partition, just go ahead and use guided, use entire disk, unless you have a really good reason not to. So just go ahead and press continue and then continue again. 
all files in one partition, continue. Finish partitioning and write changes to disk, okay, continue. And then here, write the changes to the disk. If you click no, it's just gonna keep asking you until you switch to yes. So go ahead and switch to yes, and then press continue. And now it's installing the base stuff, and this can take quite some time. Okay, software selection, just leave this all default and press continue. Okay, after about 15 minutes of software installation finally finished, and now we're on to install the Grub bootloader. You definitely want to make sure yes is highlighted for this. So click yes, otherwise Kali just won't load up at all. So make sure yes is highlighted, and then click continue. Then here, click the second option, do not highlight enter device manually. Continue. And now, finish the installation. Installation complete. Installation is complete, so it is time to boot into your new system. Make sure to remove the installation media so that you boot into the new system rather than restarting the installation. Please choose continue to reboot. So with this part, just to make sure that we don't have the ISO file still loaded in, come down here and highlight this little bar at the bottom. Then click devices, highlight optical drives, and if there's no check mark right here next to where it says Kali Linux, you're good to go. So then just press continue. And here we go, we're now at the login screen. So I set mine to Kali, Kali, login, and we're in. Kali is now installed on your virtual machine. Just in case you skipped to this part and skipped over the automatic installation, I wanna show you guys something real quick. One thing I do every time I log into Kali is make sure everything's up to date. So the way to do that is to come up here and click on your terminal up here in the top left and open it up. And once your terminal is open, we're going to go sudo sudo apt apt update update and press enter. And the first time it's going to give you this message, but now you have to enter your password because what sudo does is it actually, it temporarily makes you root and root is essentially the administrator on Linux. So now we type in our password and enter, and it's gonna update everything that needs updating for us. 1,010 packages can be upgraded. Okay, so now we're gonna go sudo, S-U-D-O, apt, A-P-T, upgrade, U-P-G-R-A-D-E, and press enter, and then we're good to go. Everything's up to date. So now, just so you know how to shut everything down once you're done, let's go ahead and clear this page. Just type in shut down, S-H-U-T-D-O-W-N, now, and press enter. And there you go. You've now shut down your virtual machine. So that's it. Two different ways to install Kali Linux on a virtual machine inside your computer. If you learned anything, do me a favor and hit like and subscribe and share the video for me. We'll see you next time.